in my Dope of the Day segment, yeah. uh, my commentary, I talked about Josh McDaniels getting an interview with the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. Knowing what you know, you were here through the Josh McDaniels years. Mm -hmm. We all were terribly damaged by those years. <laughs> damaged. Um, if you were running an NFL team, would you consider Josh McDaniels as your head coach? Oh, man. Oh. That right there, that reaction right there, would I consider it? Yeah. I mean, I think from a coaching standpoint, he's pretty good uh, offensively. Oh, X's and O's, he's I don't have a problem. Innovative, creative, um, but it takes more than that. I mean, if I'm in a situation where I don't need an X's and O's kind of guy, I need a, a culture guy, I need, I need a, a locker room guy, I need a guy that my players can believe in, then I don't know if he's a guy. But, it, it, you know, if I am in a situation where I do need to be more creative, I do need an X's and O's kind of guy, uh, then may, I might consider it. But I would have structures in place to where he wouldn't think that he had the uh, amount of power that he thought he could or would have. Uh, he can't think that. He cannot believe uh, that he has a lot of power. If he's made to believe that, then you're going to have the same thing happen and it happened here. Uh, but I, I, it has to be structurally uh, sound there for, for Josh McDaniels to have another job. Well, all right, you, you make a good point. It has to be structurally sound, meaning he shouldn't have too many responsibilities other than being a coach. Right. Is that what you're, you're saying? The coach. You're the coach. That's but it. But if you know him at all, and, and look, I'm not a complete jerk when it comes to Josh McDaniels. Mm -hmm. There was some good, but there was an awful lot of bad. Okay. And, and here's what a lot of people don't realize about Josh McDaniels, at least back then. He was so disrespectful of everybody he dealt with. Right. And I'm not just talking media. Mm -hmm. right? This isn't, this isn't a, a me against Josh McDaniels thing. I know what went on behind closed doors at Dove Valley when Josh met with various people throughout the organization. It was not pretty, ever. Okay. First of all, he never wanted to do anything but sit at his desk and run the tape back and forth and deal with X's and O's. That's all he wanted to do. That's fine if you're a coordinator. Mm -hmm. You don't have to meet with the media. You don't have to deal with the, the PR people all that much. You don't have to worry about uh, travel plans. You don't have to worry about what the guys are eating on a daily basis. You don't have to deal with agents. He hated doing all of that. Okay. He couldn't stand meeting with the media. He couldn't stand dealing with agents. He hated dealing with players off the field problems. Mm -hmm. Not that you should like that, but he hated it to the point where he didn't want to deal with it. And when you're in that capacity as a head coach, you really are the, the if not the GM and the owner, you're still a titular head. Right. And, and people look up to you and people look to you for leadership and good character. He was missing all of those things. He either didn't want to deal with it or he dealt with it very, very badly. There are stories out of Dove Valley that he used to rip people. Okay. Absolutely rip them. His own. Up and down. His own staff or? In one-on-one -on -one meetings. Okay. His own staff. Okay. One-on-one -on -one meetings. And even in public. I don't know if you remember. There was a game where th there was a problem with special teams. On the sideline, in front of 75,000 people at Sports Authority Field, he was ripping that guy. Yeah. Got in his face and up and down, screaming at him, and were, was relentless. It must have gone on for three, four, five minutes. Well, he's got in, the most famous just, quote out there, right? Just do your do job. Do your job yeah. and stop making shit up. I mean, well, he's got it, the it most was, famous quote it, out there. It was embarrassing. He really yeah. destroyed a lot of morale there. Yeah, I he agree. He was paranoid. I, I, he was very immature. Right. And, and, and let's take it from there, okay? Yeah, maybe he's matured. It's, what, five years later? So he's in his late 30s. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's matured. Maybe. But, and there are other coaches who had terrible stints in their first head coaching job. Bill Belichick had right. a terrible stint in Cleveland. Right. Um, but he had a great staff, though. He had a great staff, <laughs> and he learned from it. Right. So when he went to New England, he was more than ready. Here's my problem with Josh McDaniels. He was so destructive and so immature, and nobody ever called Belichick immature. He had other problems, but nobody called him immature. He had so many problems in dealing with people, in running an operation of 220 people mm -hmm. versus just being an offensive coordinator and being in charge of 25 people. Right. He was so destructive and so bad at it that I don't know if he'll ever become good at it. Well, the question is, did he learn from it, right? I don't know. Can he become good at it? I mean, it's a crapshoot. It I don't is know. a crapshoot. You don't did know until you put him in that position. Right. 
I'm not willing to put him in that position. You're not? I absolutely would not touch him as a head coach. Even though, even though he goes back to Belichick, and maybe Belichick <clears throat> tells him what he did wrong. Maybe. maybe he pulls him into the room and says, look, you can't be a mini hoodie. You can't be me. You got to be your own coach. Now, when he, when he was with the Broncos, who was the GM? Um, or whoever preceded John. It was uh, Sanders, uh, Sanders, 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 Brian Sanders. Yeah. But was he... He trod all over Brian. He Sanders. trod it all oh, over. He That's wanted, what I'm saying. He though. wanted another story that nobody knows. He tried so hard to get Brian Zanders fired. But he was a Zanders was a scout, right? I mean, you scout. Who was GM. elevated? Maybe yeah, elevated. So my above point his is right. Grade. If yeah. you know you can push somebody around, you're going to push them around, right? Yeah. If, if you're of shady character. Exactly. But if he gets into a situation where it's structurally sound, to where here's a GM in place, and you're not pushing him around. Then I think he'll acquiesce to just being that do head you? coach. Because I do. I, I doubt do. he's capable of that. Really? Not you yet? make him the head coach. Look, there's a reason Joe Ellis fired Mike Shanahan yeah. and hired Josh McDaniels. Yeah. Because in part, he wanted to be able to have a little bit more control okay. as the president of the club yeah. or the COO at the time, maybe. Mm-hmm. And he felt bringing in this 33 year old kid who had a, a track, a, a pretty good track record with Tom Brady and, and the Patriots offense, he felt he could bring him in and, and he could control him a little bit better than he could control Mike Shanahan because Mike really was the face of the franchise sure. along with Pat Bowen. Uh, Josh McDaniels was not going to be the face of the franchise. He was just going to be the head coach. Mike, I'm telling you, within weeks, this guy grabbed power like nobody's business. Oh, he burst in the room and he drafted Tim Tebow, right? Yeah. Totally out of control. Yeah. Joe Ellis could not control him, yeah. and it only went downhill from there. Whoa. So I don't know that Josh McDaniels can survive as a head coach in a more structured system okay. because I think he has the type of personality where he just thinks he's the smartest man in the room. Yeah. Well, there, there's teams looking at him. Uh, whether or not they'll get yeah. that sense when they bring him in. I wouldn't touch uh, him. <laughs> you're, Seriously. He's got the plague in your eyes, obviously. Oh, I wouldn't. But yeah, absolutely. He's been incredibly creative. Uh, he's been unbelievable as far as using personnel. Uh, and so when he uses the personnel the way that he has, I, I, I mean, teams are following Josh McDaniels and his concepts on offense. Uh, Brady and what he's done with Bless. You know, you look at Peyton Manning here you know, in Denver. He's got Julius. He's got Wes Welker. He's got, he's got Demarius. He's got uh, Emmanuel Sanders. He's got a lot of weapons, you know. Brady, for a long, long time, you know, he's got one, maybe two tops. And so the creative uh, nature of those offenses and, uh, and how prolific they can be, uh, you know, helps him build a case for, for being a head coach somewhere. Or, I get or, it. You know I get it. Yeah. But maybe we just know him a little bit better than maybe. most. Maybe right? a little bit more uh, uh, intimately than we really want. Yeah, right? and, the, and the 49ers I mean, can bring him in and fall in love with him. And, yeah. and, you know, they like the X's and O's aspect. Um, but it's like marriage. I've said this before. You never know about somebody until you live with them. Right. And boy, are they going to be in for a shock if they ever live with him. I'm, <laughs> Have I'm them go telling, to the Raiders, I'm right? telling you. I know people. Yeah. Trust me on this one. I know your circles. All right. I know your circles. Uh, <laughs>